We absolutely love open world games and the freedom they provide, the amount of content they deliver, and the longevity they tend to go hand in hand with. But like pretty much any other genre or category of games, they do come with their own unique pitfalls. One that has grown increasingly prevalent in the medium with time is the issue of bloat. As players, we tend to be impressed by massive open worlds that are brimming with content, but a byproduct of that has become developers who end up overemphasizing that point, often to the detriment of other aspects of the experience. Here, we're going to talk about a few open world games in recent years that have suffered from those issues. Assassin's Creed Odyssey We're going to be speaking about plenty of Ubisoft games in this feature, so it makes sense to start off with one, and it's probably one that most people think of when they think of open world bloat. There's no denying that Assassin's Creed Odyssey is an excellent game, and the vast majority of the content it delivers is an absolute blast to play through, but there's way too much of it. And that excessive size results in plenty of issues, from repetitive quests and quest design to excessively reused assets throughout the open world and more. This is a game that can easily eat up between 80 to 90 hours of your time, and while most of it is a good time, by the time it's coming to an end, it does feel like it's overstayed its welcome a little bit. Assassin's Creed Valhalla Clearly, Ubisoft had no intention of scaling back on the scale of Assassin's Creed games after the criticism Odyssey received for its blow, because its follow-up, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, doubles down on all of that stuff. Its world is even larger, and yet there's not a lot in there that stands out in memory. With little to no variety or particularly good authored content in there, everything sort of blends together, and it feels like every single one of Odyssey's worst excesses are even more pronounced in Valhalla. Obviously, it's still a solid game, but it's also one where it's very easy for fatigue to set in after a couple dozen hours. Mass Effect Andromeda Turning Mass Effect into an open world experience always felt like such a natural step forward for the series, and sure enough, that's exactly what Bioware did with Mass Effect Andromeda. Sadly, the developer wasn't up to the task when it came to the execution, and what we got was an experience that failed to realize the potential of a well-made open world Mass Effect game. The worlds that you visit feel unnecessarily large, with not nearly enough interesting things to do, and the fact that the quality of content they house isn't anything to write home about doesn't help either. We still feel open world is something that could benefit this series greatly, but if the next Mass Effect game can't do it right, I'd be best if it doesn't do it at all. Far Cry 6 There's a lot to love about Far Cry 6's open world. Impressive environmental variety, some locations that are unlike anything the series has done in the past, like full-fledged cities and populated locations, and of course, that trademark Far Cry sandbox of emergent mechanics that makes causing chaos in the open world so much fun. But again, this is an example of a Ubisoft game that's just way larger than it needs to be. Far Cry 6 is already a good game, but it would have been even better if it just didn't feel so overindulgent. Craft a relatively smaller world and maybe have less repetition in open world activities, and undoubtedly you'll have a tighter and more enjoyable experience. Middle Earth Shadow of War There was plenty wrong with Middle Earth Shadow of War, even if the game did have its fair share of strengths as well, and an overwhelming proportion of its issues could be tied back to how bloated the experience was. A world that was unnecessarily gargantuan, check. The map being littered by a smattering of optional activities and side quests that were so repetitive they almost felt like they were procedurally generated. Check. An excessively grindy progression system that was made even worse by the presence of microtransactions. Check again. That was all in the name of delivering a game that could be played for dozens upon dozens of hours, but after you got to a certain point, you really just wanted it to be over. Watch Dogs Legion Watch Dogs Legion's London is obviously a lot smaller than many of the other maps we've spoken on in this feature, partly because traversing across it is much quicker than it would be in most open world games, but bloat could come in many forms. Often, even maps that aren't unnecessarily large can feel bloated, and Watch Dogs Legion definitely does. Why? Well, it all comes down to the quality of the content on offer. The game has some fascinating ideas in place in terms of letting you play as pretty much every single NPC in the world, and there's a lot of fun to be had with that core system, especially of your own making. But there's only so far you could take something like that, and Legion doesn't do enough with it. Sadly, it doesn't take long for the experience to start feeling repetitive. Cyberpunk 2077 Again, Cyberpunk 2077's Night City isn't an astoundingly massive open world, and traversal is pretty quick, but it's another example of a game where its ideas start feeling stretched thin not long into the experience. There are some really good side quests, yes, but there are also plenty of bland and generic ones. Open world activities never really do anything interesting, and the sandbox of the world itself is as good as non-existent. It all feels like set dressing, and it's too big to be set dressing. Dying Light 2 – Stay Human Dying Light 2 deserves a lot of credit for how it designs its open world around its core parkour mechanics, and there's no denying that making your way through its intricately designed environments has always felt fun. 
But yet again, this is a world that's larger than it needs to be, and it's filled with far too much filler content that the game honestly would have been far better without. Grinding out all of its checklist style side activities and side quests might allow the game to pack in over 100 hours worth of content, but Dying Light 2 doesn't stop and ask itself if a significant portion of that content is even worth engaging with. The Crew 2 It's not impossible to make a massive open world racer that doesn't feel bloated, just look at the Forza Horizon games. The Crew 2 however doesn't get that balance right. While it's fun to travel through its truncated version of the entire United States, it's also a game that buckles under its own weight, because what you're doing in the game isn't fun enough for how much you end up doing it. The driving mechanics are solid enough, and being able to fly planes and drive boats obviously brings in some much needed variation to the gameplay. But by and large, The Crew 2's world tends to oscillate between feeling like it doesn't have enough going on, or having plenty going on that just doesn't feel interesting. Ghost Recon Breakpoint We've spoken about a lot of Ubisoft games in this feature, so it makes sense to end with this one as well. And yes, we're ending with the worst of the bunch, because Ghost Recon Breakpoint is a game with very few redeeming qualities. But let's not even touch on its asinine story or how it needlessly tries to be a looter shooter. Let's focus only on the open world itself, which has to be among the most vapid and boring maps we've seen in recent memory, in spite of how ridiculously huge it is. From terrible enemy AI and boring combat, to repetitive and dull missions and a litany of glitches, every aspect of the experience seems hell-bent on making the open world feel an absolute chore. We can only hope that the next Ghost Recon game, whenever it arrives, steers far clear of making these same mistakes. And with that, we reach the end of this video. Have anything to say? Let us know in the comments below. Also, we upload new videos every single day on Gaming Bowl, so please consider subscribing as it really helps us out. Thanks for watching.